Welcome, everyone, back to the School of Greatness podcast. Very excited about our guest today. It's, his name is Josh Altman. He's got a new book called It's Your Move, and I'm very excited about this. Good to see you, my man. Thanks for you? coming on. Very excited. Yeah. We met like a month ago, not even, at the uh, Colin Parker sock photo shoot, which isn't out yet, but we all we both have our own sock, custom sock. That yeah, talk about random meeting. Random, huh? right? <laughs> but uh, I was like, oh, yeah, of course. I've seen the show. I don't watch too much TV, but I've seen you know a couple episodes on a flight or something, and I was like, yeah, of course. I'd love to have you on. That's where most people see it. On the airplanes, yep. right? And uh, it's Million Dollar Listing is the show you've been on for five years, correct? Yep. And okay. uh, it's been on television for eight seasons. Amazing. But you got in three years after, I guess. Or yeah, you know, they needed uh, they needed some new blood, some fresh, so, young, yeah, good looking, <laughs> former football player. You you played you were kicker at Syracuse, right? I was, I was. I got two of the biggest diamond rings, oh, a, wow. an Orange Bowl championship and a Fiesta Bowl championship. And I never got it on the field. You never got on the field. <laughs> nope, but I, I, I warmed that bench with the best one. <laughs> so you were there for four years playing football? <laughs> yeah, I actually only played for uh, the first two years. Okay. Uh, and then I wanted to enjoy college a little more. Of course. But Donovan McNabb was my quarterback. That was super what? cool. What years were this? Uh, were 90, uh, I'm sorry, 2000, 97 to 2001. So it was 97 and 99 wow. is when I played. I, I had at least 10 Big time NFLers on that team. Of course. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's insane, man. Yeah, you never insane. got on the field, though. Well, during practice. During practice. But it, no stress, though. No because stress. kickers have the biggest stress. I mean, I would have liked to kick. I'm not going to lie. Of course. Uh, but the guy who was ahead of me, his name was uh, Nate Trout. Like an All American or something. Or- All American. Breaking every record, every recorded. So we <laughs> were up. On the field. And, you know, with Donovan McNabb, we were winning games like 60 to nothing. So I'm like, coach, let me get let me, let me an just, extra point. Let me get least. one extra point. No. And, and no. He wanted him to break rec- more records. Yeah. yeah. That's tough, man. Tough. Not even a preseason game? Tough, but it makes for good stories. There you go. But at least you got to play. <laughs> yes, preseason and, 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 and halftime. That's yeah. cool. I mean, the thing is, college football is intense, man. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of intense. I mean, you still had to train like everyone else did, even though you didn't get to play. You were still doing three days. Oh, yeah. Still oh, yeah. working your butt off. Yeah. And uh, how much would you say your success now with all the stuff you've done has been has translated from what you learned in sports. Oh, big time. Really? Big time. You feel like you have time. an advantage over all the other players in the real estate game because you're a competitive edge? Absolutely. Yeah. And I think it's super important, and I always talk about when I have kids, uh, you can forget about video games. Right. They're playing yeah. real games. Real games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because, you know, you learn, uh, you know, everything from teamwork to, mm-hmm. uh, you know, having ice water in your veins when you're, when you're in a difficult situation. And I mean – you know, especially as a kicker with the pressure. Oh, my goodness. It's just like the same thing as sitting at a table dealing with a, the $25 million house and, yeah. you know, lots of money being traded, and, and you got to keep your cool. Of course. Yeah. Man, um, I'm excited about this because we have something in common. We've both been on a Bravo show. I was on a show for four episodes. Called, what was it? Called Misadvised. Okay. It lasted one season. It was a few years ago. It was probably a mistake, but it was a great learning experience. And it was like a dating show that three women were the experts on. Okay. And they were uh, relationship coaches, but they couldn't take their own relationship advice, and they didn't have any boyfriends. Or okay. Or they weren't married. <laughs> so it was called Miss <laughs> Misadvised. And uh, one of my friends was like the leads who was on there, and she asked me to come on one night and as, a, as like a guest at one of the events that they were hosting. And then um, the producers were like, we need you to have you ask this other girl out and blah, blah, blah. And I got roped in some – Lame thing. But I know what it's like being on Bravo, and I know that a lot of it is, let's say, manipulated in some ways. Um, So let's talk about first the reason you got into getting on the show. I want to backpack, backpedal a little bit after that, but why did you decide to go on the show in the first place? Good question. So uh, I was was doing pretty well in my real estate career. Yes. I had sold uh, a few celebrity homes at that time, so I was in the newspaper mm-hmm. quite a bit, and they had three people on the show. One of them was bowing out or left or fired. I don't know. Nobody ever knows. Uh, <laughs> but they were looking for somebody new. Yeah. I got a call uh, to come in, and, you know, obviously, first thing I'm thinking is probably what you were thinking. Nah, I yeah, don't yeah, think yeah, so. Exactly. You know what I mean? I worked my way up in this business. <laughs> I'm not about to go on TV and be- My brand messed up. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I went in almost as a joke- uh, and seven interviews later, wow. they offered me the gig, and I still said I got to think about it. Exactly. I said that for a month. I was yeah. like, I don't know if I'm ready for this. I asked everybody, and the funniest, my parents said, don't do it. Of yeah, course. Yeah, of course. My brother, who's my business partner, Matt, 
uh, he said, Josh, you know what's the most important thing about being in real estate? I said, what? He said that people know who you are. What better way for people to know who you are than be on a show that plays in 70 countries around the world? Mm. And uh, who cares what they make you look like? Because at least you're known as, you know, the jerk realtor or the nice realtor or, you know, whatever realtor. Who gets results. And you know, you're known as a realtor. Yeah. Who cares if they like you or not? And today, it's even funny. I, I'll know when the show is playing in a place like Australia or Canada because uh, I'll wake up and I'll have 10 emails from Australia saying I want to buy a house. In, are, no way. Aren't you the realtor of Los Angeles? No way. They don't know. Yeah. And it's such, How many realtors are here? Well, as far as I'm concerned, one. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, how many are like registered? Thousands. 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 And some of these top realtors spend hundreds of thousands for billboards, yes. for the bus stops, yeah. for everything to get to the signs in front of everyone with their photo. Yep. And they spend so much money and you get you get paid to have a billboard on TV essentially. True, but and I it, also I in return I gave away my entire private private life. That's true. Yeah, and privacy. You give up that. You yeah. give up and it's a lot of work and a lot of time. I know how much time and energy it is to the shooting. I mean, I was actually driving up Laurel Canyon one day. This must have been eight months ago. And I remember seeing the film crew up on by a house and I saw you walking down the stairs. I was like, they must be filming right now. It's funny. And I saw you just walking out there and I was like, you know, in some ways it seems like a great life, but in other ways, man, when you're filming, it's like you don't have a life. It's extremely difficult. Uh, your typical reality show is about three months. We film for 10 months straight. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah, for, for 12 weeks, that's it. Oh my 10 goodness. months straight for 12 weeks on air. And uh, the good news is it, it is my job, yes. so I got to do it anyways. I have a partner, my brother, who actually can hold down the fort when I'm filming because it's nice. extremely exhausting. You got to be 110% at all times. And you're constantly texting, calling people yeah. back, making, yeah. You don't want to slip either when there are no. 10 cameras on you. No. Yeah. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> so between that uh, and, and the book and speaking engagements around the world, uh, yeah. it's, it's busy. Man, that's crazy. It's now, busy. How many people, how many deals would you say you were closing before the show? to where you're closing now? Are they just coming in left and right, or is it still kind of up and down depending on the market, or what, what's it like? Uh, okay. Before the show was such a long time ago at this point can't for me. can remember. It was, you know, it, it was five years ago in my career, so naturally that's anybody like, who's going to grow. Like 50 years in dog yeah. life, right? <laughs> so, hey, look, I can't tell you exactly where I would be if I wasn't on the show, but I can tell you that it's definitely catapulted our career a lot faster than, yes. it, than, than it would have been possible. You wouldn't possible. be where you're at now, let's say that. Absolutely. And, uh, uh, you know, we're, we're blessed to be on it. We love it. We take the good with the bad. And trust yeah. me, it's not all good. I mean, uh, yeah, when I first met you, I was like, you're not that much of an asshole. <laughs> you know, but they portray you in the two episodes that I saw. It's like, but I know because they did the same for me when I was on the show. I was like, I didn't act like that, but they made me redo shots and they make you redo scenes and like say stuff that you don't want to say. You're like, what? I well, we don't, we don't redo anything. They just kind of roll. But when yeah. you're rolling for 10 months, it's like, they're going to have a lot of footage. Yes. Uh, so, you know, I get that a lot because I'm, I'm definitely the alpha male on the show. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm super uh, aggressive. aggressive. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm very passionate about real estate. And so that can come off. All of those can come off. As being the kind jerk, of, the ego, yeah, man, yeah, 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 yeah. But you know what? I, I talk about it in the book all the time. I call it calculated confidence, mm -hmm. uh, which is an important part about being successful in any business. Um, and, uh, you know, it is how it is. But eventually, after a couple of years on the show, I, people got to know me. They yeah. see me enough that they know, look, most importantly, I'm the number one guy on the show that you're going to want to represent your money. Right. You may like me or not. But trust me. I'm going to get you the right deal. Yeah. The best deal. You want me to go battle with you. Yeah. Because yeah. you're going to hustle. Yeah. And uh, you've got the relationships. And that's a lot of the, the success that you have. Exactly. Um, now, I'm interested. Confidence. It's something that, you know, if you could bottle up confidence and sell it, you can make so much money off of that. Yeah. How do you teach someone to be more confident? And how do you continue to be more confident without being you know, because you need to be able to connect with people as well, and sometimes that can push people away. Yeah, if you're too egotistical. So, how do you continue to increase your confidence, but also have humility and grace in certain deals and conversations? And then, how do you teach other people how to do it? 
Got it. So that's a great question. Uh, first of all, which I talk about a lot in the book is how I got to where I am as far as my confidence goes. Uh-huh. You know, I moved out to LA with zero money. Yeah. Okay. From rub, New York. From New York. I couldn't rub two dimes together. Yeah. Uh, I was, my brother and I lived in a fraternity house because that was all we could afford. I slept on the couch. He slept in the bed. Uh-huh. Wait, we weren't even part of the fraternity. Really? <laughs> we worked a deal with a buddy of ours. We gave him like a couple hundred bucks a month and that's where we crashed. Wow. So uh, it wasn't always super confident, Josh, I can tell you that. Uh, But from a lot of the experiences and failing as well, uh, which I did big time uh, mm. when the economy collapsed and coming back up and, 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 and getting to where I am today. It's kind of you, you learn from your mistakes and you become more confident. I always say in order to be a successful salesperson, you got to know your product. Okay, that's the single most important thing. You got to know it like the back of your hand. Yeah. Otherwise, you can't truly sell it and you got to believe in it. Because you don't well. believe in it if you don't know it. Right, exactly. Gotcha. So I am very, very good and I can look anybody in this business in the world <laughs> in the eyes and say, I am an expert at Los Angeles real estate. Yes. I study it. I know more than 99.999% of the people out there. Okay. I flipped houses. I financed houses. Uh, I sell houses, buy them, all that stuff. So I, I'm very confident because I'm very good at what I do because I'm an expert and I work very hard you at You do it. the work to become the yeah. expert. It's not just falling on the lap. It's yeah. I'm the first one in the office every day. I'm yeah. the last one in the office every day. Uh, the, it, it's a passion of mine, real estate. Yeah. So it's, I don't consider it work. But I literally study it. They call me the Rain Man of real estate. There you go. Make That's it, what they I like do. It. It's like, what, how much is a house on the 900 block in the flats of Beverly Hills? And you can be within like a hundred thousand. I can range. easily all day yeah, long. Right. Yeah. Because you just know what all the other houses are selling for already. Now, what is? Do you feel like you're an expert at the whole LA area, or is it more like five neighborhoods, the Malibu's, the Santa Monica, Beverly Hills? Good question. Uh, I probably. The Platinum Triangle, which is Beverly Hills, mm-hmm. Bel Air, and Homely Hills, yeah, uh, as well as uh, the Sunset Strip is is kind of yeah. my bread and butter. That's your bread and butter, gotcha. Yeah. So it's yeah, not I live up there. Yeah, uh, you yeah. know, I'm walking my dogs uh, sure. up and down those streets, and I love it up there. Right, gotcha. Okay, so if someone asks you, you know, Hermosa Beach, you probably wouldn't be as no. well versed there. You'd be like someone else. Can I, w- I, you know, what I would do? I'd put them in touch with because I have a team of twelve agents. My agent who does specialize who does it there. There you go. Yeah, and, and we both they're gonna have the, the answer. Deal. There you go. I like it. Um, now what do you think is like for someone who wants to be more confident, let's say they're struggling with their self-worth or their, their career, they want to get a raise. What are some simple steps to being more confident? And I know you talk about it in the book, but what do you think are just some simple things every day to increase that for yourself? Well, I think number one, uh, the most important is to, what I like to call surround yourself with with your dream team. Mm. Um, I call it Josh Alvin's dream team. Yeah. Uh, and it consists of a, a, of a, a good amount of support from people that I trust, uh, value their opinion and, and who I surround myself with. I always say that, uh, you are the average of five people that you surround mm. yourselves with. Right. You ever hear that before? Yeah. Yeah. I totally did. You didn't make that up. I just made that up right now. <laughs> um, so, uh, I think it's super important, super important to do that. So yeah. in real estate, for example, I have, uh, the best mortgage broker who's available 24 seven for me. And we've worked our way up in the business together. Uh, I have, uh, you know, everybody from the best title guy and escrow guy and, and all that. So I surround myself with this team of, of people who I can trust and they can guide me in the right directions of whatever I do. Um, so that's one way, obviously in any business is just surround yourself, uh, with some, with, with people who support you more importantly though, is get a mentor. Mm. Okay. Uh, I am big on that. I, I now am a mentor to many people. Uh, I even have a mentor program coming out soon, which I'm really? super excited about. Uh, look, whatever business you're doing, unless you're inventing something that's never existed before, you're not typically reinventing the wheel. Okay? Someone's already done a great job at it. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, no matter how good of a realtor or how many billions I sell, there's always been somebody before me who's been very good at it. Mm. Uh, get a mentor. Yeah. Learn from them. You know, when I started in real estate, uh, I walked into the company that I worked for and I went up to the, the, the biggest, baddest real estate agent in that company. And I said, my name's Josh Altman and I work for you. And he said, what do you mean? I don't need anybody. I'm not hiring. I said, listen, I said, I'm, I'm, I'm newer in the business. I, I, I think that you're amazing at what you do. I want to learn. I don't care if I need to get you coffee, your dry cleaning, whatever. If wow. you have an open house that's been on the market for over a year and nobody wants to sit it, call me. I'll be your guy. And that's what I did. And I started sitting open houses that 
no one would even want to go to anymore. They've really? been on the market so long. Eventually, I ended up, uh, you know, working my way up for, you know, better open houses. My first, like, eight out of ten deals were from people who walked through those. And then I had my wow. own deals going. So then I was successful. Uh, and what year was this? When you This was 2008. When you were out in L.A., yeah. right? Yeah, gotcha. I came out in 2002 or three. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Um, but that's how I worked my way up. Attach yourself to a mentor, learn from them. And, and look, you, there's going to be good times and bad times in any yeah. business. Uh, and you're going to make mistakes in business. And what I talk about in the book is being able to bounce back from those mistakes yeah. and, and, and redirect your, your route and, and finish strong. It sounds like to me, you could be pretty successful in anything you do because you're so driven. You, you, you know, you want to achieve why real estate. Oh, I love it. I was playing Monopoly uh, <laughs> before anybody else really? was trading houses. And uh, what is it about it that you love? So real estate, let's say, as opposed to, I don't know, stock market, right? I can drive and go see my piece of real estate right now and I can mm. touch it and feel it. I like that. I like to do that when I'm investing in things as well. I, I invest in the stock market too, but not like real estate. Yeah. Um, I've always loved mansions. I, I, before I was a realtor, I used to drive around and look at houses in my neighborhood that I grew up in in Newton, Massachusetts. Uh -huh. uh, I'd be like, wow, that house is amazing. Yeah. And yeah, I, I was just always fascinated by some of these houses. And, and that's you know the start of it. My start in real estate, though, in general, was flipping houses. Wow. Okay. That's how I got there. I took- uh, Buy them, fix them up, flip them. Yeah, but it was by mistake. So my brother and I, I was in the mailroom. Okay, I finally got a job, which was good uh -huh. uh, when I was in that fraternity house. And, this and is back in New Jersey, right? No, 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 back oh, here. Here, back here, here, gotcha, yeah, gotcha. Yeah, here. here. Right when I came out here, I got a job in the mailroom. Uh, I worked in that mailroom for about a year and a half. I saved as much money as possible, which was about $5,000. Uh -huh. <laughs> and uh, so I had five, five grand to my name. Yeah. And my brother took $5,000 of his, and that's when you could get 100% financing. Yes. Okay. I don't know if that time was a, a, that. a wild time, which got that. us into trouble eventually. Sure. However, we went out and we decided because people we had spoken to that you know were mentors to us were very successful, not just in real estate. They were always successful in their job, but they made money in real estate. Mm -hmm. And that was the common denominator was, you know, I'm in the music business, but I also make money in real estate. I'm in the whatever business, but I make money in real estate. But so, I put my money into real estate. Right. Yeah. So I looked at Matt. I said, why don't we take our 10 grand and go buy a place? And 0 we 0% down. Whatever. Yeah, yeah. 0% down. We bought a $400,000 condo. Wow. In with, LA. With 10 grand oh and nothing in, nothing in the bank. Here in LA. Here in LA. And West you, LA. Really? Yep. <laughs> oh, man. Right on Bentley. Wow. And uh, uh, anyways, what happened with that? So we bought it for 400 Every week we got a paycheck. We ended up changing a fixture, painting a wall, knocking down a wall. Did you had a tenant in there? No, no, it was us. No. We lived there. Oh, you lived there. We gotcha. lived there. We bought it for us and oh, we lived there. When you there. got a paycheck from your job. You yeah, from you. our job, gotcha. we, would, we would fix it fix up. It up. We literally were living paycheck to paycheck. And uh, <laughs> it was like three and a half, four months later. I look at my brother. We're sitting on the couch. And I go, Matt, this place looks awesome. Wow. Why don't we put it on the market? And, you know, we were kind of joking. We were throwing back some beers. We were like, all right, why not? Let's try it. And you're not a realtor. You don't have your license. Yet. No, I'm yeah. delivering mail. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm delivering mail and broke. Uh, so we put it on the market for $600,000. About, I want to say, four weeks later, we sold the place for like five hundred ninety thousand. No way! So we made one hundred eighty thousand dollars. You're like we're the richest people Rich in the world. <laughs> that that was the most money you'd ever seen in your ever. life. Oh my god, that's so funny you said that. That literally is I my next line. I know the feeling, line. man. You're like, I'm, I'm retired. The, <laughs> I'm, I'm done. The richest man in the world. <laughs> I know that feeling, man. So we took that money and, you know, we, I did a couple things with it. First thing I did, did was you did I, you? I, I, I went to the Jeep dealership because I didn't even own a car. I was so poor. Oh, man. And I bought a Jeep Cherokee. Okay. And the second thing was I jumped in that Jeep Cherokee, drove to my mailroom job, and I quit. <laughs> okay. And uh, so wow. Matt and I, we took that money. We started rolling into the next one. And then the next And that's how we originally got that's into it. it. You just got into it by kind of accident. That was it. And you're like, wow, we can actually make some real good money. This is fun. This is interesting. We're, yeah. we're good at it. What's the biggest flop? Ugh. The biggest investment you were like, this is going to be a home run. I'm going to put all my money on, all my chips in this one. 
and then it just tanked and it almost broke you. Oh, it it broke me and it uh, <laughs> it made you uh, cry for mommy. It made me cry and uh, yeah, I don't need to think about this one too hard because this is a very obvious one, uh, an obvious uh, point in my life that I will mm. never forget, which turned out to be one of the best experiences sure. ever because it happened a little early on. Uh, we had ended up flipping about. I don't know. Let's just say a dozen houses, right? Uh, and at that point, by the twelfth one, I was in the mortgage business because I didn't want to pay off any more people every time I buy or sell a house. So you're getting double commission or whatever, yeah. essentially. Yeah, so yeah. now I'm a mortgage broker and a house flipper. Yes. And uh, we were doing well. I was, uh, you know, uh, I was a millionaire by 26. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> I see this house in the Hollywood Hills, right by Laurel Canyon. This is the coolest house I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> okay. It looks like it's a castle. It's yeah. a Spanish castle coolest thing i've ever seen two master bedrooms mm. my brother and i are still living together i'm like this is the greatest <laughs> the party house ultimate in the world. bachelors yeah so we ended up buying it for uh two and a quarter million dollars okay yeah. uh now i was making a lot of money as a mortgage broker and you know that was never going to stop right so back in 2000 uh, 2005 six people were making so much money as mortgage brokers back then yep. so much and then it just boom the parking lot at the mortgage company was an exotic car dealership. Wow. Okay, that's what it was. And all of us showed up with no money, and within a few months, we were all driving. Crushing. The, the, the fanciest cars you've yes. ever seen. We got the house. The economy stopped. Uh, all I remember is this, because it was all a blur. Month by month, my bank account was going down a huge amount because oh. my monthly nut was like 30 grand at this point. And with zero oh. money coming in, very quickly it was going down. Gone. We ended up selling that house one year later, and I lost $600,000 oh, on that my house. Oh, goodness. And, uh, yeah, I was a millionaire by 26. I was broke by 26 and a half. Wow. Everything I had worked, all those dozen houses up to that point, took all that money, rolling all of it. To one house and then? Gone, all of it. So what was It that? was like it never – my last six years of my life never happened. Wow. So what uh, – how did you bounce? How would you bounce out of that? Man, that was tough. It was it was a very difficult time. Uh, I was uh, down and out for sure. For how long? Uh, I was depressed. Uh, I mean, probably a year. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So, trying to find what the next step was going to be. Uh, I knew that if I did it before, I could do it again. But mm -hmm. you know, it was just getting over that 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 hurdle. And eventually, I said, "Listen, I, I I've flipped houses. I financed houses. Now I want to sell houses. I love real estate." So what better time to get into real estate than the worst time ever? There you go. <laughs> That's the best time to get in the stock market too, right? There you yeah. go. There you go. So I learned when the market was down. Uh -huh. uh, I learned a lot because there wasn't a lot going on. I didn't sell a f my first house for uh, six months in the business. I didn't sell wow. anything. And uh, worked my way up to there. And, and now we're, you know, we, we built a company. We sell about a million dollars of real estate a day, which is great. Amazing. Uh, we have our team where, uh, you know, we're all over the place. And, and let me tell you, it, it was a crazy learning experience. It was a very difficult time, but I'm glad it happened uh, because of what I learned from it. Yeah. And wow. I'll never overextend myself like that ever again. Really? Ever. Wow. Ever. Yeah. So what was the biggest lesson you learned about yourself during that time? Uh <sighs> You know, it, it it was just being so naive. Like this was never going to end. Yeah. I mean, I was like, oh, everybody needs mortgages. This will never end. Right. It stopped so, so quick. So fast, right? I remember the exact day, because it was only about eight months after I had just gotten eleven thousand square foot lease in Koreatown in an office, and you know, I'm guaranteeing that lease, and uh, it couldn't have been. It, the whole thing was a disaster. I put change on the doors of my of my company. Oh my gosh! I couldn't make my house payments anymore. I saw each one of my three, you know, fancy cars being, you know, taken away. Oh. It was it was a nightmare. <laughs> I mean, it's funny now to laugh to look oh, back to but say you're so depressed. Then probably it was it was the worst. Wow, it was the worst. Yeah, try going from a, a, a two and a half million dollar house to <sighs> apartment, uh, <laughs> uh, literally a fifteen hundred dollar a month apartment. Oh going back gosh. after you worked your way up from that. And then going back to that. What's that do for your confidence? Uh, it, cr it crushes you. It crushes you. I, I always like to say, to make light of the situation, there was a Seinfeld episode where Jerry and Elaine are walking down the, uh, the tarmac to get onto a plane. And the stewardess says, hey, folks, we have one seat left in first class. Do one of you want it? And Jerry looks at Elaine and, and, <laughs> and he's like, I'll take it. And Elaine goes, why? Wait, 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 wait. I'll take it. 
And Jerry goes, Elaine, have you ever been in first class before? And she goes, no, Jerry. That's why I'm so excited. He looks at the stewardess and he says, I'll take it. And she's like, why? And he says, because you've never been there, so you don't know what you're missing. Mm, it's true. So it's tough because I knew what I was missing because I, I, I had gotten to that point and now it was all taken away from me. I had to figure out a way to get back there uh, and, and, uh, and, and do it the right way this time. It kind of reminds me of sports in a way because, <clears throat> you know, I had an injury. I had to retire from playing arena football. And it's like a lot of athletes go through this depression mode where they're gods, right? You're playing in front of 80,000 people in the Orange Bowl or Sugar Bowl, yep. wherever you played, or 100,000, whatever it is. And you get that every week. You get this rush, and then it's taken away from you after you graduate or you don't make it to the NFL. It's gone, and then people are just stuck. It's difficult. It's difficult. You know, it's interesting, actually, that you say that. A lot of the people that I was in the mortgage business never bounce back. And what are they doing now? Struggling still, looking for that next get-rich-quick thing. Or working crappy jobs that they hate yeah. or something. Yeah, and that, it's, that time screwed them up so much because they could never go back to working <clears throat> a normal job. And it was kind of like just they got lucky for a second. Like everyone yeah. was making tons of money. Yeah. But it's not that easy. You can't just like get easy money without doing the work. You got to work. You got to work. You got to work. I love this. Um, what do you feel like is the the one home that you've always wanted to sell that you've never sold? <laughs> is mm. there a home in L.A. that you're like, it's like your golden like ticket that you've always wanted to get? Ah, let's see. There's one that's escaped you many well, times. Well, there was uh, there was the Manor, which was the Spelling Mansion. Okay. The Mantor. Okay. The Manor. M A N O R. The Manor. Where yeah. is that? Uh, that was uh, Tori Spelling's parents' house. Uh, 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 Aaron Spelling, the, okay. the famous producer, and that's in Homely Hills. And they were listing it for about 125 million dollars. It ended up selling. My company sold it. So how many? 125 million. It ended up selling for that much. No, no, it ended up selling for 85 million to Petra Ecclestone, who's you know wow. Bernie Ecclestone, Formula wow. One's daughter. And, uh, and you didn't get the deal. I didn't get the deal. No, but that was a beautiful home, and, and one day hopefully I can sell that. Uh, it was like 40,000 square feet. It was something ridiculous. But What's there are a couple of those monsters out there right now, off market that are asking you know that hundred million dollar price tag that. Uh, I may just have a couple offers on and trying to put it together, but it's very difficult. It's difficult for overseas people to buy it too, because you got to get your money in the country. Mm. It's not that easy to get a hundred million dollars transferred into really? a, a country that you're not a, a citizen of. Wow. <laughs> yeah. What's the biggest, uh, the, the most expensive home you've ever sold? So I just sold a twenty-three million dollar house, uh, Reba McIntyre's house, two weeks wow. ago. Nice. Um, and that was an off-market deal. Uh, randomly i went to go see it and i was passing uh the guy who ended up buying it i was like passing him on the road and i was like i'm gonna go see this house mm. you want to come see it with me he came and he bought it and closed no seven way. seven days later Just like that all cash 23 million that's it congrats there it is. it's gotta feel good <laughs> what's a commission like after because isn't it different commission the higher it is it's like a lower commission or yeah, yeah a it's percentage, I mean? your average commission is five percent so two and a half to each side the representing gotcha. the seller and the buyer uh, when you start going over $10 million, sometimes it's, you typically see 4% total, so two to each yeah, side. Yeah, yeah. Uh, still, that's, two, that's what that was. Two's not that bad on a yeah. $20 million deal. Hey, you know, you got to you – know, my, brother, my brother are partners, and we got to pay the government. Uh, and, uh, oh, of course. I get it, man. You yeah. know, book advances, are like it's all gone. It's, it's gone. It's gone. Oh, that was gone before I even <laughs> – <laughs> <laughs> um, And did I hear you have a deal on, on, like, on the beach somewhere or, like, a big development deal or you're working on or no? Uh, oh yeah, last year I was involved in a uh, a deal that it was a hundred million dollar piece of sand. Actually, you're selling. it was an incredible piece of sand in Marina del Rey that we right. were selling. Uh, it's still available. Um, <laughs> you're still, yeah, still yeah. selling it. And I left comp I left that company, so I'm no longer involved in that deal. Oh, unfortunately, okay. gotcha. But it was uh, it was a decision that we, we we made together as a company to move on to another one. And uh, we joined Douglas Elliman, which is mm. one of the most famous brokerages uh, on the planet. They sold like 18 billion last year in New York wow. City alone. Um, and uh, yeah, we're we're the you know we're we're the face of them out here. So we're right. excited about That's it. Great. Yeah. Now tell me about closing the deal. How have you learned? You know, you've got so much information inside of you. For people listening or people watching, what are the secrets to closing a great deal where it's a win-win? Because I come from a place, obviously, you want to win. You want to get the most. Yeah, but it's course. also, you don't want to make someone else feel like they just lost. Right. So how do you do that where it's a win-win, but it's like you really 
one as well. Well, you're right. So some of the best deals ever done in any business in history have been where everybody wins. Yeah. Right? Uh, Otherwise, it's like, yeah, you know, well, listen. It's nice to make a big check, but then if everyone else feels like crap. Yeah. It's, and it's not about the check, by the way. It's right. about, look, I like when I sit down at a, at a conference table and I'm negotiating, I prepare like I'm running out of that tunnel in front of 80,000 people to kick yeah. a football or I'm going to war. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so I, I get in that mind state and, that, that, and, and, and really, you know, yeah, I put on the right suit. I do. I yeah. even do things that we used to do in football, like put on a sock a different way or whatever. Really? I got to be in the zone. Of course. Okay. So I go to battle with it. Uh, however, uh, you know, if, if there, there are certain ways where you don't want to hammer on people too much. I mean, you always want to reinforce that they're getting a good deal, which I always tell people, uh, by the way, you're getting a great deal. So excited for you. And uh, you know, when it comes to negotiating, uh, which I've studied, I've studied it a lot and I've been through a lot of negotiations, it's really important to, you know, your approach to it, but also to the, a, a few key things. One is you never want to talk too much. Uh, I, I like to sit back and listen. I think that's super important. And one of the keys to, to being a master negotiator is to sit back, shut up and listen. Because no one likes to be sold. They like to buy. Well, right. The more you talk, the more information you give out. Okay. Right. So if you're just talking, you're going to start saying stuff that you might not have said before. Sure. So you got to listen. Uh, and the, <clears throat> the second and most important other thing is that you never go into any negotiation needing to uh, close that deal. Okay. You go in there ready to walk away at any moment. Oh. And that's also very important. That's powerful because then when you're I, not making stupid mistakes. Exactly. Listen, I can smell a buyer who is in love with the property all the way to the bank, okay? Yeah. <laughs> They're emotional about it. If I know that you want that property, if I know that you or your significant other is... is, is the dream home. Is dream home. <laughs> <laughs> Watch out. Because if, it, as opposed to you just coming in and be like, yeah, I like it, but you know what? There's always another house that's going to come uh, up. And there's a couple things that are wrong. Yeah. And, yeah. I'd like to put a deal together. If not, not a big deal. I appreciate your help. Although if so, great, I appreciate it. You know what I mean? Going with that attitude... Because the second you start showing your desperation, oh, hey, I'm going to jump it's all over. Game you. over. Yeah, you'll be a shark. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so a lot of a lot of real estate is bluffing. Mm. A lot of it is bluffing, and you got to be able to read people, uh, and and you know become pretty good at that over the years of reading people. Mm, yeah. I like that. Do you play poker as well? I don't. I don't. Because <laughs> you'll don't. lose it all day. <laughs> you're good at reading people in real estate, but you don't want to lose all your money. Well, now else. you're going towards the whole Vegas and gambling <laughs> right. thing, and you know it's probably better off that I don't. That's funny. Uh, I'm curious now relationships and drive yeah because i have a lot of you know the most successful people in the world that come on here in various fields and i like to dive into relationships because <clears throat> in my opinion relationships are the key to success in life you know without being able to communicate with people and develop relationships it's hard to close deals right you've got to be in relationship with every human you come in interaction with right to close the right deal <clears throat> now how about being so driven, you know, you've got your TV show, you've got zero time as it is, you're going after the biggest, you know, homes here in LA, you're trying to blow it up with your company. What's it like having a balanced relationship, intimate relationship life and chasing a big dream? Do you feel like you can have both? And um, how do you navigate that? That, uh, let me tell you, I get that question all the time really? uh, because people want to know about my relationship because it happens to be on the show. On the show. Right. In fact, so for everybody out there, I met my fiance on the show uh, the first season, and she actually was the assistant of one of the other stars of the show. Made for some good TV for sure. Is he still on the show? <laughs> she, he is not. She is. <laughs> and, and, you know, everybody who watches the show knows that last year I, I canceled our wedding on the show, unfortunately, just because we have cameras all around us. So it, it was, you know, everybody's kind of involved in our relationship and we've gotten used to it now at this point. My brother is my business partner and my fiance works with us. Yes. So it's one of the most like intertwined businesses you've ever seen. Uh -huh. um, because and it's I'm a dealing, reality show. And it's a reality <laughs> show. It's very important to find balance in life. Uh, I've struggled at this many, many times myself. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no question about it. I'm very open about it. I'm a workaholic. I like to call myself a real estate-aholic. Uh, all I do is work. And, and I wake up in the morning. I'm super excited. I, I can't wait to get to work and close deals. A lot of my clients are overseas. I'm on the phone till you know, sometimes one in the morning. I mean, yeah. whatever it is. My fiance is also a real estate agent. She works with us. And there's been dinners where we're both on the phones where we don't even talk to each other. 
you can't do that and have a healthy relationship. No. You got to shut it off at some point. And this is something where, you know, it's, it's definitely something that we work on together. Uh, it's very difficult to shut off the phone. I'm sorry. There's, I'm in a situation where I'm 36 years old. Yeah. Uh, I'm at the top of my game. And knowing <clears throat> just because I've lost it all before, I've learned that you, you, hit, harder. you hit while it's hot and you yes. work hard. Uh, so it's difficult to put it down. But y- you, you got to find that balance. And I talk about that a little bit in the book. Um, and it's, it's an ongoing work. Yeah. That's what it is. It's ongoing work, but I couldn't do what I do without her. She's my support, not only, uh, you know, not only uh, uh, mentally, you know, and, and, and I bounce ideas off of her all the time yeah. because she's in this business. So she understands how I think, sure. but we, we, we help each other because we're both on the show. Uh, and, and you see a lot of that play out this year on the show, really, which starts actually Wednesday, Wednesday. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. September 2nd. And, uh, how many episodes is it? So it's 12 episodes. Yep. And, um, the other thing, which is really cool, which I think you would like is in the book, we talk about this mentality that we live by, which is, we call it the ready fire aim. mentality. Yeah, I saw this in here. Okay. Ready yep. fire aim as opposed <laughs> to ready aim fire. Um, and what that is, is being able to identify an opportunity when it's in front of you being able to capitalize on that opportunity uh, and, and take it to the next level. But also, if you, if you fail, be able to bounce back like we did in, in our dark times when, uh-huh. when we lost everything and kind of get, get back on the road and, and, and keep punching at it and then eventually becoming successful with it uh, and see it all the way through. I think that's important. I've lived by that for a very long time. Yeah. Uh, I have lots of people that I've dealt with, clients who can tell me stories about an opportunity in front of them where, you know, they waited, they hesitated, and that's when calculated confidence comes into play because you're confident enough to make that decision at that moment yeah. and run with it as opposed to waiting and possibly losing out on it. Sure. Yeah. So you're, she's your fiance still? Yeah, fiance, yeah, fiance. Five years now. Fiance, cool. Yeah. Um, and she's cool with the whole reality show, you know, with everything's happening, she's okay with it, or I guess there's still challenges, you know. Well, well, listen, there's still challenges. Uh, yeah. She's okay with it because we've both been on it, so yeah, it's yeah. a lot better than if one of us was on right, it. Right, right, uh, And, uh, yeah, you know, she comes with me on a lot of my speaking engagements. That's right. So you know, right. everybody actually, you know, wants to see her. They want to see like, her probably more than you. Yeah, <laughs> like, hey, we'd like you to come speak to uh, a thousand realtors. So, oh, by the way, can you bring Heather too? <laughs> like we'll we'll get you a ticket too for her. I, you know they love her. Yeah, they love yeah. taking pictures a bit of it. Plus, uh, you know we balance each other. Our personalities yeah, big time. That's great. Yeah. What would you say is your biggest fear right now? My biggest fear uh, is uh, I would say that my biggest fear is uh, my next step in my business. We we've, we've grown our business to a point where it's. It's huge and it's amazing, uh, but I oh, my fear is getting too big, uh, where mm-hmm. I lose some of the things that got me to where I am today, and uh, where I don't have time to be a realtor anymore. What are those things? Uh, well, listen, I, I love showing houses. I love being on the ground, you know, level of of dealing with people face to face. I mean, I've had people in my car from, you know, first time buyers to uh, Kim Kardashian to mm-hmm. billionaires, you know, to billionaires to heads <clears throat> of states. Uh, and you know, you're driving around showing, I'm driving around talking to these people and hearing about their experiences. And you know, I always like to learn from them. These are people that are (laughs) so interesting and especially we're talking to a billionaire. It's like, (laughs) do you know how much money that is? Like, tell me like, what's it like? How did you get there? You know? So I learned from those, those, those experiences. It's like you get to have your own podcast when you're driving people around. That's you're interviewing it. These successful people. I mean, maybe I should put that in my you car. You should record it and then have that be, you know, Josh Altman's road to success driving. Suck. I like that. That's done. There it is. Hey, by the way, I'm going to show you $10 million houses today and I'm going to be recording it. Exactly. Um, so uh, uh, I don't want to lose that. I don't want to mm. get to a point where I can't you're, do that you're anymore. too big and you're too, you don't have the time to do that anymore, right? Yeah, the book was something that, you know, I, I, it was a passion project. It's it's taken me it takes about a while to do three years. It's a lot of time, man. a lot of time. And, and I did that not so much to sell. I did that because it was something I wanted to put on paper to, yeah. to, you know, allow people to kind of look into how I got to where I am today and learn from some of the experiences that I failed on. Yeah, man, know what you want. Trust your gut succeeded anything. When was there a time that you didn't trust your gut 
and you made a big mistake from it. <laughs> oh, man, let's see. <clears throat> I'm trying to think of the best one because there's been many. <laughs> um, you know, there's been many from, from you know, getting involved in certain businesses to, hmm. uh, uh, you know, not pulling the trigger on a house when I had access to it to buy it. Uh, you know, I, you always go through those feelings sure. and it's a war that you're fighting in your gut, but you got to go with the first instinct, the first right? instinct. Yeah. yeah. What would you say is your main vision for yourself? You know, you see yourself, we're back here five years from now yep. doing this podcast again. What do you want to have achieved in the next five years? Um, so for me, uh, what's the impact as well? So I love making people money. Okay. I, I've made, uh, many, many, many people, uh, multimillionaires yeah. by guiding them in the right direction as far as, uh, what real estate to buy. Uh, and I, it's at the point now where I have access to more money than you could ever dream of <clears throat> by just making one phone call to one wealthy guy saying, you got to buy this, trust me. And he'll write that check without even seeing it, knowing that my word is gold, wow. uh, because I've worked my way up to that point. Uh, my next step as well as, you know, obviously selling houses is, uh, I've started partnering with a lot of my clients on, so on some of these properties and developing, mm -hmm. um, I feel that, uh, I love doing it because it's fun and, 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 you know, when you, when you can partner up with someone who you become friends with while making them money, it's, 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 you look, it's almost like a game. It's a game of, uh, chess with different houses. And, sure. you know, obviously there's, it's not an automatic if the market switches, uh, you can lose money. But, you know, I, I've spread myself around enough where if it if it does switch a little bit, the market, that I'll be okay. Uh, but I love the fact of getting in development. I think it's fun. Mm -hmm. I have a house that I'm finishing flipping right now uh, that I've been working on for a year, and I'm putting it on the market in three weeks. I love it. Yeah. What's the thing you're most proud of that most people don't know about you? Oh, well, I'm just, uh, let's see, most proud of. Um, you know what? I'm just a really good son to my parents. Mm. Where do they live? <laughs> I, I, they live in Colorado. <clears throat> yep. And uh, we have a very tight family. And, you know, nothing. I love nothing more than just hanging out with my family. Oh, and, that's cool. You know, they don't care about any of this stuff. Right, right. You know, I'm still the little brother. <laughs> and I'm still the baby to my mom. Yeah, me too. And, you know, I'm just proud of how we've uh, stayed to tight together and haven't let anything get between us, no matter what it is. Uh, and, and, you know, my dad is one of my mentors. Mm. My mom is the most amazing <clears throat> woman in the world. And, and, you know, we just, I'm blessed with that and, yeah. I'm, and I'm so happy for it. Yeah. Um, a couple questions left, uh, but I want to make sure everyone goes and gets this book. It's called it's your move by Josh Altman, my million dollar method for taking risk with confidence and succeeding at work and life forward by Damon John. Make sure to check this out. It'll be in stores September 29th. 29th. And you can um, get it at www.thejoshaltman.com. Thejoshaltman.com. Make sure to follow him on Instagram and you're on Twitter and everywhere else as well, right? All the Josh Altman. Um, but also check out the show, Million Dollar Listing. It's on Bravo at what day, what time? Uh, yeah, know? it's Bravo Wednesdays, <clears throat> 10 p.m. Wednesdays, 10 p.m. You can check out all the great deals you're doing and all that stuff. Um, but this will be in Barnes and Noble and everywhere else as well, September 29th. So make sure to go pick up a copy and support him. It's coming out right, essentially right now when this episode comes out, it's coming out. I even got, I got a shark to write the forward. You did. Damon John. It's great. Yeah. Man. It's great. Um, couple final questions and this was great. I want to, I'm going to have you come back on at some point yeah, maybe love to. next year and we'll talk more about negotiating. Um, one of the questions I like to ask people at the end is the three truths question. Okay. And this is, if it's your last day and the book has been deleted, all your properties are gone, everything's gone, your show has been removed from TV forever, no one gets to watch it anymore. Oh, God. And you got to leave, you got to leave, a, you have a piece of paper with three truths about life, of everything you've learned. Yeah. About the world, about life. And you got to give that as your legacy for people to see. One piece of paper, okay. three truths. What would those three truths be for you? Uh, money isn't everything. Oh, interesting. Money isn't everything. That would be one. Uh, number two uh, is be true to yourself. Uh, and number three would be um, be 24-7. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. Uh, that's good. Um, next question is, what are you most grateful for in your life? Uh, my family. Yeah. Yeah. Easy. Okay. Easy. Yeah. 
Before I ask the final question, I want to acknowledge you for a moment, Josh. Okay. And I acknowledge everyone okay. at the end of my show, but I get to acknowledge you for your realness because you could come across for a lot of people as probably a douchebag on the show and this <laughs> egotistical dri- driven guy who only thinks about money. Right. But, you know, I've got to connect with you twice now, <clears throat> and I love your authenticity, man. I love how real you are, at least around me, and, you know, seeing you behind the scenes. Cool. You're real. You say it how it is, and you work your ass off. That is true. And I acknowledge you and appreciate for your hard work because I know you're doing it um, not just for money. You're doing it to fulfill something in your in yourself as well. It's fun for you. It's a lot of it's your passion. Yep. And I think everyone should be following their passion and doing it with the extent of the energy that you do it. Because if we all follow what we love and we make money around it, we're going to be happier. So I want to acknowledge you for the gifts that. that you bring to the world and for your real energy. And I love that you don't really care what people think about you. <laughs> that, that that took a few years I to learn know. that. I know. And that's not easy. <laughs> that's not easy. That's not easy. Yeah. But, you know, you keep sticking to who you are. And even if it makes you look bad sometimes, and I appreciate your realness. Cool. Thank so you very much, man. You I appreciate that. it. That's very nice. Um, final question. It's what's your definition of greatness? Ah, definition of greatness. Um, for me, it's because, uh, earning everything you have is, is, is definition of greatness. You know what I mean? It's like, it's so much sweeter for me because nobody gave it for me, gave it to me, Mm -hmm. you know? And, you know, when I came out here, I had nothing and I worked my way up. Even when I lost everything, I worked my way back up. I did it myself. I don't owe anybody anything. Yeah. Um, and so that for me is definition of greatness. If I succeed or if I fail, it's no one's fault but my own. Josh Altman, thanks for coming on, bro. I appreciate cool. you, man. Absolutely. <laughs> thanks, brother.